And what we want to do is help you uh, have more success or help you add this to your business. And, and we want to really provide you with some techniques, some strategies that have been tested in the trenches. Um, I, I'm really lucky. In, in my role as a sales leader, I'm running around the country and I'm meeting with folks like you who are really good at something else. You know, most of our clients are not long-term care insurance specialists. Um, you know, they've got either a financial advisory business or a benefit business or they're tax professionals. So they're really good at what, at what they do, but, and, and that's not long-term care insurance. And what we do is, is kind of uh, give them uh, full-service brokerage support and uh, enable them to have success when they're talking about this stuff. So those around the country who are having success, who have built it into their businesses, you know, I run around and I ask them questions. How do you do it? What are you saying? What about when the client objects this way? What about when the client objects that way? And, and what we've been able to do is come back to you with all this homework, all this research, all this data, and we're going to share with you what works and what doesn't. So that's the, the, the real uh, crux of the call today. Michelle Domino and I are going to be tag teaming on this call where I'm going to do a little bit of the setup, and then Michelle's going to come in and go through four case studies. And, and these are case studies that we see over and over and over again um, where you're dealing with an affluent client, uh, you're dealing with a client that is just on the fence in, in terms of denial and being doubtful uh, with respect to long-term care planning, the price-sensitive client. I, I kind of chuckle at that one. I, shame on me. I put together the presentation. Aren't we all price-sensitive? You know, I am. In fact, I always tell people that I hate buying insurance. You know, I, I'm going through the process right now. I'm buying a couple more million dollars of, of life insurance, and uh, I'm a giver. You know, I want to make sure that, uh, you know, my wife's boyfriend doesn't have to work. You know, but I'm in a situation where I hate buying insurance, and uh, and we've got to be sensitive to that. And it's not because I don't like the agent, because I'm selling it to myself. We're all price sensitive. We all want to, once we've identified the risk and realized that we have to do something, um, you know, we all want to get most bang for our buck. We want to get the most amount of benefit for the lowest amount of premium. So the show will cover that one. And then, hey, the reality is not everybody's healthy, and and these insurance companies are are getting more conservative. Uh, in terms of their underwriting. So what happens when one person gets declined, one person gets approved? You know, there's an emotional component to that where one, you know, somebody gets upset and says, well, if you don't want my wife or me, forget about it. I don't want to do it. So we're going to give you strategies to deal with these four types of clients. And, and I'll tell you what, these are the clients that you're going to be out there talking to. So you know, our goal over the next 30 minutes or so is to have you grab on to some tangible sales tools, strategies, to give you some talking points so that if today you've got a conversation with somebody about long-term care, you're going to be able to run with it. And, and towards the end, uh, we're going to have some Q&A. It's not a voice Q&A, but you do have a uh, you know, Q&A section of this uh, GoToMeeting or a chat section. Uh, or you know, we encourage you to just pick up the phone and call either Insurance Network America or LTCI Partners. So, uh, I love this one. I stole it from one of the carrier partners. It's an advertisement I've seen in trades that nobody likes to talk about long-term care, which is exactly why we have to talk about long-term care, right? And, and I'm having this conversation every night, it seems like, with my two young daughters. No, I'm not having a long-term care conversation, but I'm having this one. Come on. You know you need to do it. It's the right thing. You know it's good for you. Eat your vegetables. You know, that's the conversation that I'm having with my kids. What I'm saying is we've got to have these conversations with, with clients that it's easier to stick our head in the sand and not think about this stuff. But the reality is at some point in my life, I'm going to need some help. Um, I heard a great one last week. Um, uh, I'm, again, visiting with a producer, asking this person, what do you say? How do you open up a conversation? What do you, you know, how are you framing this? And he says, Steve, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty simple guy, and I, I like to keep it simple and straightforward with clients that uh, these days with medical advances, the way we eat and the way we exercise, it's really hard to go from healthy to dead. <laughs> and, and, uh, and so they talk about health care in their retirement years and how that impacts them. So look, the, I'm not going to beat you up with statistics. You're not going to see a, a lot on the need for long-term care planning in this discussion. Uh, what we're going to do is, is talk about how do you have that discussion? How do you break through the walls or push through? But we've got to have these conversations. 
what you're looking at on the bottom in terms of 750,000 is three years of care 30 years from now. You know, that, that's a big number. And, um, and, and take off one of the zeros, uh, the average balance in a 401k on a national basis today is $75,000. That's uh, from Fidelity. So that, that's kind of scary. If people are thinking that uh, my 401k is going to pay for my long-term care expenses, you got another thing coming. Um, you know, I, I'll say tonight, I'm a, I've been a political junkie lately, and tonight uh, there's a debate with uh, Ryan and, and Biden, and you're probably going to hear a lot about Medicare. And Medicare is going to be highly politicized over the next month, and I've looked at proposals on both sides, and Medicare is going to be right-sized. You know, that's the only way to keep the program intact is to reduce some of the benefits paid, uh, particularly for long-term care, whether it's at home or in a facility. So, look, we've got to do this. We've got to talk about long-term care. It's important. Uh, last thing I'll say on the statistics is yesterday I, I sat through a presentation, um, and I'm always picking up something as I'm out there listening to these folks. And, and, and he heard and saw a lot about the statistical likelihood of needing long-term care uh, of, of requiring care at home, assisted living, skilled nursing. He saw a lot of things about stats regarding the need. And he says, listen, break it down on an individual level with your clients. You know, when you say 70% of people over age 65, it's not, it doesn't hit home enough. You know, how do you hit home with somebody? You say, listen, it, it's pretty simple. Uh, there's either a 100% chance that you're going to need this or a 0% chance. You know, what do you want to do? You know, how do we plan for this? So that's, that's what we're suggesting is, number one, you talk to clients about this stuff. Let's give you an industry update real quick. Um, boy, I, I've had everybody ask me, what's going on in this long-term care industry? You know, are there still carriers out there who are doing this? Why, you know, why do we see big rate increases? Here's what's going on. I, I think we're in generation number two of long-term care. First generation long-term care is over. It started 30 years ago uh, with, with nursing facility policies only. Uh, kind of restrictive benefits, you know, uh, in, in terms of how you qualified, if you needed to be in a hospital first. Uh, the products have evolved. They are fully comprehensive, care at home, assisted living, adult daycare, skilled nursing. Most care now that takes place at home. Um, and, and the carriers have figured out that, that some of their earlier actuarial assumptions were off. They simply priced the products thinking more people were going to lapse their products. They priced their products um, with different interest rate assumptions, which impacts the profitability of their business. And now we're in generation number two. And, and carriers with a strong stomach are in, and those who just didn't want to make it a part of their core business are out. So yeah, there's, there's been a shifting carrier lineup, and it's been frustrating at times for us, but we feel we have a competitive product portfolio with carriers that are committed to this marketplace. So uh, again, what's, what's happening today that's really impacting these carriers? Interest rates. And I know that you guys see it today on life insurance. If, if you're looking at permanent life insurance, anything with a long-term guarantee is usually changing today, uh, whether it's product pricing, product features that are changing. Why? Because a 10-year treasury note. Uh, that's what these companies invest in. When they take premium dollars in, not only do they, they you know, set aside for reserves, but they invest in 10-year treasuries. You're looking at 1.61% uh, as of a couple weeks ago. 20 years ago, 7.28%. So it impacts the profitability of these carriers' blocks of business, and so they make changes accordingly. What do they do? They, they reprice the products, or they dial down benefits being offered. So I expect that to continue as long as rates are held down. Um, there's been consolidation or constriction in the marketplace, but we still have a number of carriers that are doing this out there. Uh, we're seeing a shift to more electronic applications. We have a couple carriers now that have uh, truly online enrollment, and then one that's got e-applications. We think we're going to see more and more of that. What does that mean? It means it's going to get easier in terms of the process of selling long-term care. Um, you know, still going to have, that, have to have that conversation with clients about, hey, why this makes sense, how it makes sense, how you do it. But the process is going to be easier. Uh, take a look at this. In, in 2000, um, if we're talking about nursing homes, and, and really that's not where most people are, are, are receiving care these days, but you know, that's where we have a lot of data. In 2000, only 6.4% of people in nursing homes had long-term care insurance. In 2010, 14% of people out there in nursing homes uh, were using long-term care insurance. So we're going to see, um, you, know, you know, hopefully less and less reliance on Medicaid, which is a welfare program, and more reliance on private insurance. 
So what that's telling me is that people are starting to get this stuff. You know, it used to be five, six, seven years ago, uh, I would have had to convince somebody that uh, you need to think about long-term care planning. Do you know what this is? Medicare doesn't cover it. Today, everybody I talk to is connected in some way to long-term care. Everybody I talk to has a personal story about how it impacted mom or dad or somebody close to them in their lives. And what you have to figure out is, okay, now that you know, you know the emotional implications, the financial impact, how are we going to deal with it? You know, what's your plan for long-term care? So, uh, again, lastly, we've seen carriers kind of dial back or dial down unlimited or lifetime benefits. Sometimes the carriers are dialing down 10 pays. We still have a couple carriers, I think, that do have limited payment options. But uh, I will tell you that in 2011, the industry was up. We expect in 2012 the long-term care industry to be up as well in sales. So people are starting to get it. Yes, fewer players, uh, but consumers out there are starting to get this stuff. So uh, hey, let me just set add up. a couple of for, things to that real quick? Please. Um, just so everyone's aware, uh, MedAmerica and LifeSecure do actually have a um, million dollar pool of money. They each have that option available, which equates to you know, 10, 15 years of coverage. And then LifeSecure does currently have, and there's a few state limitations, but they do currently have a 10 pay and pay to 65 available, and MedAmerica has the, the 10 pay still available. So most carriers have gotten rid of lifetime and limited pay options, but there are still a couple out there. And, and, and you know, it, it's that principle of scarcity. You better get it now while you can. <laughs> um, you know, sometimes these carriers move in that herd mentality. So, you know, if you've got clients that have the capital to do it, I would really suggest looking at those limited payment options before they decide to pull it off the table as well. Um, so just to set up before we get to the case studies, I, I really think that long-term care is no different than, than anything you're doing today. Uh, you know, you're identifying the need, identifying the risk, whether it's a financial risk, a medical risk, an emotional risk. You're assessing the planning options out there, and then you're implementing a strategy. You know, is that any different from what you're doing today in your daily lives if you're working with clients on life insurance or handling their money or dealing with them from a benefit standpoint? Uh, you're finding that, hey, there's a, there's a hole in the portfolio. You know, long-term care is a risk to our retirement planning. It's, it's an extended health care risk. You can even quantify that risk. You know, some of our carriers have, have iPad applications where you can look at a cost of care based on your, your area and project out what the total risk is going to be. We've got a neat tool that Michelle will tell you about towards the end. Uh, so, again, it's a three-step process. Um, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Client, um, you know, one thing we haven't talked about is, is long-term care planning. You know, we think health care in your retirement years is going to be something that we need to address. You know, what are our options out there? Well, you know, we don't really want to rely on the government because we're not sure how those programs are going to look or what they're going to pay for. Um, we can self-insure, but we probably have to sock away a lot of money, and we'll go through that analysis uh, a little bit later. Uh, or we could look to long-term care insurance. And, and I, I consider family care kind of self-insuring uh, because, yeah, there's a financial component, but there's also an emotional and a medical component to, to self-insuring. So really, it, it's simple and easy. There are two options here. You can self-insure, or you can buy insurance. And, and what we're suggesting here is implement the strategy. If your client says, uh, you know, I think we're going to self-insure, implement that strategy. You know, what does that mean? You know, it, it's usually the bye-bye. The I don't want to talk about this anymore. What it should mean is, okay, let's put it in print. Let, let's help you decide where the money is going to come from to fund it. Which agency are you going to work with? You know, have you, do you know three home health care agencies in the area or assisted living or skilled nursing facilities? Is there going to be a primary caregiver? You know, let's write that stuff all down so that we've got a plan in place. Uh, or you've got insurance as the alternative. So, Michelle, take us through these case studies. Walk, walk us through one by one. Sure. Thanks, Steve, and uh, good morning, everyone. Um, we put together four examples here, and this is going to be um, the most common four types of clients you'll run into or the most common objections that you'll run into when you're having the long-term care conversation. and. Uh, three out of the four, I'm going to probably repeat it. Steve's already mentioned it once. Um, you're never as young and healthy as you are today. And to me, that speaks volumes um, about somebody. And, you know, Steve also mentioned carriers are tightening up their restrictions. Uh, very rarely do we have a carrier partner come to us with an announcement saying, hey, look, we've uh, loosened up our restrictions on cancer or diabetes or how we'll look at heart disease. Uh, I've been doing this for six years now, and uh, it just seems like they, they just get tighter and tighter as they gain more experience. So um, what he has up there on the screen now is the 
affluent client. You know, you've got someone in their, their mid-50s, early 60s, and, and they say to you, look, I, can, I have a lot of money. I can cover the cost myself of I, if I or my spouse is a long-term care event. And, you know, typically the follow-up question I will ask them is, why would you want to do that? Um, why would you want to pay out of your pocket? Uh, why not transfer that risk to an insurance carrier? Uh, another example I like to give is, you know, I have homeowner's insurance and I have car insurance, and unfortunately, if I were to lose my home to a fire or my car were to be totaled, I actually know how much that's going to cost. I know what my house would cost to replace. I know what my car would cost to replace. Um, you just don't know what you, what you have if you have a long-term care experience or if your spouse does or if you both do. You have no idea of knowing when will that happen, how much will it cost, and to what extent. So I like to put it in that perspective and say, oh, yeah, well, if you could cover the cost of a long-term care event, how much will it cost you? Do you, do you even know? Um, you know, another, another thing I like, Michelle, is, is uh, you know, when you're dealing with Apple and clients, they usually understand uh, the issue of leverage. You know, and, and, and they understand leveraging dollars. And, you know, it goes back to what you said before. I could use my own dollars or I can leverage my own dollars and use the insurance company's money. You know, people with money get that stuff. The other thing that I'll say about, you know, affluent clients, and in this situation, you know, it, it might be the, the ultra-affluent client who was over a $15 million net worth. But, I mean, take a one off that 15, and you've got a client with $5 million worth of assets. And, and uh, that might be a little bit more realistic uh, from the clients that we usually see looking at this. And, and I'll tell you what, where, where they were concerned is not just the money piece of it. You know, we didn't get into an argument with them about can you afford it, can you, you know, do you want to pay for it. We, we shifted the focus to care. You know, yes, you have money, but managing a long-term care event takes more than money. You know, who's going who's gonna to help you? Who's going to get their hands dirty? to manage, monitor, and adjust the plan of care. So my two cents on this is clients with money, you know, usually have that concierge mentality. Let's have somebody else take care of this for us. We think it's important. We want to plan for it, but I don't want to do it. And, uh, and, and that's what resonates with the clients with money. Anything else you want to add on that, Michelle, before I go to the next one? Well, the only thing I wanted to add is that I have a, a friend whose um, parents would probably fit into this category, not quite the $15 million, uh, net worth, but, but up there. And they are giggling as they, uh, the parents have told them, we're spending your inheritance, basically. Um, so they are living life, they're traveling, they're, they're doing all sorts of things. And so, you know, just the last thing is, is reminding them that they either want to preserve that, you know, retirement uh, fund or the nest egg that they've built together or, you know, what they would be passing down to their heirs. Or they and want and to again, spend it all and go traveling, that's fine, too. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, and and again, you look at the, you know, you got a couple here, and and you know, you just saw the numbers. There's either a hundred percent chance that it's going to happen, or a zero percent chance. And uh, you know, we know that that likely one of two of these folks are going to need some care. Um, let's talk about this doubtful client. What if what if I never need it, right? That's everybody that that I've ever met with, and producers always come back to us and say, you know, yeah, yeah, we still face the denial issue. So Michelle, walk us through this one. Yeah, the what the what if I what if I don't ever use this insurance? You know, there's that's always on someone's mind, and you know I just like to ask them questions back, make them talk, make them you know what is your plan? Well, what if it did happen to you? Who would take care of you? Where would they take care of you? And make them actually engage in that conversation um, because, like you mentioned, nobody likes to talk about this stuff, um, but unfortunately it does happen, and especially for someone who's single, to me that's the the key word here. Uh, I don't know if this person has children or not, it doesn't say, but even if they do, you know, like you just mentioned, do you want your children to have to take care of you? Do your children know that they have to take care of you? Um, ask them questions like, I, my own example, I live out of state from all of my parents and step-parents, so if the plan is for me to take care of them, that's going to be pretty difficult. Um, so just, I would put it back on them, ask them the questions. Um, and this is the client that I like to usually bring up, the uh, care coordinator benefit. To me, that, that's a huge, and I speak from experience, that when, when a family goes through a long-term care event, yes, there's a financial aspect. Yes, it's, a, it's huge that financially this can devastate a family. Um, but what about the emotional aspect? Um, all of the plans have a care coordination benefit. You know, yeah, what, what is that, Michelle? Explain, explain to us. Explain what, what that, that means. Is, 
when someone has a long-term care event, um, the family member can call up the insurance carrier and say, you know, my dad had a stroke and I don't know what to do. What, who do I turn to? And that care coordinator is going to walk through the options. They're going to offer referrals. They're going to probably have some discounts available. Uh, they're going to be able to pull up facilities in the area if, if, it, if a facility is needed or home, excuse me, home care coordinator health agencies. You know, is it best to have dad stay at home? Is it best to have dad go to a facility? And who will best take care of him um, if a long-term care event should happen? So just the emotional aspect and having someone to turn to um, in that huge moment of uncertainty is, is, to me, as big of a benefit as the financial aspect. Yeah, so, I, you know, when I look at these situations and I talk to advisors out there, uh, you know, who are, are facing that denial um, you know, whether, whether it's because this person's health conscious or, or because somebody's had no LTC experience. Now, we're seeing a, a, a shifting trend that most people that you talk to, that we talk to, have had some form of experience. But I'll tell you what, you're going to run into people who have no experience uh, in long-term care. And, and in this situation, I, I talked to the agent on this case, and he said, my, my client is in phenomenal shape. Uh, you know, this agent was... Uh, about 10 years younger than this client, and he said she'd run circles around them. Marathon runner, ate healthy, uh, took care of herself. As Michelle said, single, no support structure or system set up. And the answer is, I don't see myself needing this. And so take the information here. This woman really needs long-term care planning. You know, I'm not sure if it's insurance yet, but she needs a long-term care plan. Why? No support structure or system. She's not going to you know, drop dead at age 70. You know, this woman's going to live into her 90s, and it's likely because she's a marathon runner that she's beating up her body right now. You know, she's pounding the pavement, and she's the likely candidate for the hip replacement, the knee replacement. She's going to have the chronic back and hip issues. You know, that's, that's the issues that runners face. And so, you know, turn it around in this situation. Hey, because you're taking care of yourself today, you're going to live a great long life. And if you live that long life, you need to think about health care, how you're going to deal with health care age 65 to 95. You know, I mean, I know that sounds nuts, but that's how old this woman's going to live to. You know, statistically speaking, when you look at, at uh, you know, mortality tables. Uh, so how are you going to deal with health care over the next 30 years? And yes, I know you've got a nice pension, you know, through the university and, you, and, you, and you're making a good living, but are you going to outlive your money? And, and would a health care event, you know, deplete those hard-earned savings? So, you know, that's how we're, we're you know, overcoming this objection. And, and what I would suggest, too, is don't get into an argument with somebody, you know, about the statistical likelihood of, of needing care. You know, agree with them and say, you know what, you're right. You're probably not going to need this stuff. But humor me for a minute. If you did, and then I'd go through that list of questions that, that Michelle, Michelle just shared with us. So there's the doubtful client. Next one is the price-sensitive client. Michelle, walk us through this one. Okay, and, and for both the doubtful client and the price-sensitive, again, I'll, add, I'll, I'll mention to them, you're never going to be as young and as healthy as you are today. So, you know, just keeping that reminder out there, even for the marathon runner, um, she's definitely not going to be as young as she is today. She may be as healthy, but, but again, you just never know. Um, so for the price-sensitive client, obviously you mentioned everyone is price-sensitive. Um, so typically, you know, we've had, we've had a mindset shift um, over, I'd say, the past five to ten years uh, when it comes to long-term care planning. It used to be the idea that you had to have the, and I use air quotes when I say Cadillac plan, you had to purchase the most that you could get for a, a monthly benefit and the longest daily benefit, or I'm sorry, benefit period that you can possibly purchase. Um, one of the reasons that the carriers are doing away with that lifetime benefit is because no one was really buying it anyways, uh, especially over the last five years. Um, so we've really had a shift in getting that, you know, you must offset the entire cost of care to now it's more, and especially for the price-sensitive client, why not at least purchase some coverage? Let's take a look at what you can afford and let's design a plan that way. You can definitely back into a plan uh, and start with a target premium, whether it be a monthly or an annual premium, and design a plan that way. So at least you're going to offset the coverage as opposed to cover the cost of an entire long-term care event. So that's typically the route and the angle that I'll take with a, it's a very price-sensitive client. Again, you're not going to be as young and healthy. You're in your mid-50s um, as you are today. 
So why not purchase some coverage? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that whole uh, uh, that shift, something is better than nothing. Uh, you know, that that's the right approach to long-term care. You've got this situation where there's a couple who had experience with long-term care. They knew what they were, you know, they knew what they were going to be potentially faced with at some point in their lives. But you know what? They got life too to deal with, right? I, I love long-term care, you know, but what can I afford right now? And and forget this couple. Let's talk about me. Uh, I bought long-term care, you know, three years ago, and and you know, two little kids. Uh, my wife doesn't work, so I was more concerned about life insurance and disability insurance. Uh, again, I, I I know that long-term care planning is right. I've got, I've got a history of Alzheimer's in my mom's side of the family. Uh, I'm I'm not a marathon runner. I'm more of a the 5K, 10K guy, and and uh, I run all the time outside on pavement. So I've already had one knee surgery. I'm probably going to need another one. So uh, I'm that guy that's going to live hopefully a long, healthy life. I know I'm probably going to need this stuff at some point. But I'll tell you what, um, it's expensive to live these days. You know, whether it's a mortgage, other insurance, you know, private schools for the kids. Um, you know, so what can I afford? So Michelle said it about solving for the premium. Do what you do with life insurance. Solve for the premium in your planning. Find something that your clients can afford, and you don't necessarily need to transfer the entire risk. Co-insure. Come on, you, you guys are in, the, in the, the group benefit world. You see a lot of that in that side of the house. What we're saying is there's been a shift in long-term care for a number of reasons. Um, you know, because the carriers have had to reprice and change around these products uh, in, in terms of assumptions, it's impacted the pricing of the coverage. So the prices are higher for the similar coverage because the carriers would be more conservative. So what do I do? I put in some form of protect, protection for my client. I, I, I work within a budget, and I go back to my client and say, listen, here's a good comprehensive plan. You're going to get 100% of that care coordination that Michelle, you know, just discussed, and we're going to cover about 70% of your long-term care risk. You know, that strategy works. You know, what does this stuff cost? Um, you know, we're finding right now, on average, you know, we're seeing Michelle. Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe 100 to 200 dollars a month in premium. Does that sound right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. You know, so 100 to 200 dollars a month. Uh, you know, I, I was at a, a, an enrollment meeting earlier this week, and, and I was teasing somebody because she, you know, she said she went to Starbucks every day. I said, no, really, every day? She says, no, I, I go there four days a week. And I said, well, what do you buy? Well, I buy the venti vanilla drip. No, not, not the exact type of coffee, but what do you buy? Do you buy a muffin and a coffee? Is it medium? Is it small? And I did the math, and that's $98 a month that she's spending on Starbucks. Now, I'm, I'm not suggesting that she you know, change her habits or her vice, you know, whatever you want to call it. But what I'm saying is this type of planning is affordable. Uh, you know, $98 a month would buy somebody a comprehensive long-term care policy. Would it cover all of the risk? No. But I'll tell you what, that's a co-insuring strategy right there. So, you know, we're all price sensitive, but there's a, a, a way to design plans that fit within a budget. And, and Michelle said it, and maybe in a different way, but I'll, I'll say it in a different way. Um, not only are you going to be healthier today than tomorrow, but the, the policy that you're looking at, the premium that you're looking at, is the best it's ever going to look. <laughs> right? um, if you decide to wait, not only do you get a little bit older, not only is the underwriting more conservative, but these carriers are coming out with new generations of products that are being more conservative in pricing. So whatever I'm looking at today is likely going to be the best price it's going to be. Um, you know, and you can share that with a price sensitive client as well. Last one, let's talk about when one person gets declined. Do you want to touch base on the last one, Michelle? One more thing on the last item. Um, with the one child in college, it might be tempting to say, well, let's just wait until that child is out of college. Um, and, you know, again, let's see what you can afford today with that child in college. Let's get you some sort of coverage. And then we can also take a look after child is off the payroll of college and we can see what is your benefit grown to with the inflation that you chose. And let's see if we need to get another plan in there to supplement. Um, and maybe then we can cover the cost of care. Um, but again, encouraging them to not wait 
because of that health and because of the, the new products that are coming out, because with every year they get older, the more expensive the policy is going to be. So that was the last thing I wanted to add. No, that's a great point. And, and, and you know, in terms of plan design, uh, next week on the 18th, we're having a national conference call. We can get you the info on. But it's really going to be talking about plan design. Once we've you know, sat down and we're, we're designing plans for these folks, well, with one kid in college and they're price sensitive, there are plans where you can buy inflation or buy more coverage as you go. And uh, we're going to really take a deep dive on, on all the different options or plan designs um, you know, for different types of clients. So, okay, one person gets declined and one is approved. How do we save the case? What do we do? Yes, this is the most awkward of the, the examples that we're looking at today. Um, one of the nice things about, what's that really? It's not a nice thing about a decline, but when a decline happens, uh, we do have the ability to work with, with you, the agent, and work with the client and see if there is any other carriers that will take a look. And in some cases, there just isn't. There's just uh, health conditions that unfortunately are, are uninsurable with all carriers. But we at least try before we go back to, to the agent and say, ooh, we have a decline here. We at least shop it with all the other carriers, see if there are any other options for that client. So that, that's first and foremost with the, with the one person declined. And, then if we do have to go back, and it's, it's true, no other carrier will look at the declined spouse, and we do have to go back to that client and, uh, and let them know, they usually are going to be upset and, and say, well, if you don't want my spouse, then you don't get me either. And, and that's just a hard conversation to have. And, and speaking again from having a, a parent who's had a long-term care event, um, I'd rather have one of my parents have long-term care coverage than neither. Um, you know, that's just a, it's just a fact. So it's a real sensitive and emotional conversation that you have to have and, and just, you know, convincing the one person, again, you're never going to be as healthy as you are today. You may seem upset today and want, not want to get the coverage today, but, but let's face it, you know, if you are insurable, um, you know, embrace that and, and, you know, maybe the other declinable or the spouse's decline, maybe their health will change. Maybe, you know, there is something that can be worked on and, and sometimes it's not, but definitely looking at those options. Um, to see if there are any is key, and, and we do that yeah. for you. You know, the other thing you do in, in this situation is, is um, you know, right off the bat, you know, before this thing gets declined or rated or approved for that matter, you've got to manage their expectations. LTCI Partners has a lot of data and information about how long-term care is sold and how long-term care is approved. And, and I could tell you, maybe not at this very minute, but I can find something at my fingertips in a few minutes and tell you industry-wide what the approval rates are for folks over the age of 70. So, so why, why do I tell you that? Because you've got to manage their expectations up front, meaning you're visiting with these clients. Uh, they've had friends that have needed care. They're both retired, but they've got some money coming in from their you know, IRAs or, or Social Security or pensions. They get it. They live in a, in a community in, in which there's a lot of folks like themselves who have needed care. You know, their kids live out of state, and you're saying, hey, we all agree that this stuff makes sense, right, that, that this planning makes sense. You can afford it. You know, we've designed a plan that makes sense for you. But I want to let you know a little bit more about the process. You know, because of your age, the insurance companies are going to want to come out to your home and do an assessment. And they're going to want to take a look at you, make sure you're moving around to and from, make sure that... Uh, Cognitively, uh, you're in good shape, um, and and I'll tell you what, what we're seeing right now is about half of everybody over the age of 70 are approved. So uh, you know it's really important that we we get this coverage. We're going to try our best to get this coverage, but there's a chance that one of you might get declined, and and I'll tell you before if that happens, I hope it doesn't happen. It's even more important for the person who does get approved to hang on to that coverage. So what have I done right there? I, I've, I've managed their expectations about a decline. I've kind of uh, soft-shoot it and, and said, hey, this might happen. And, and I've let them know that it's important to hang on to this stuff if it does happen. And, and so it's not as much of a shock to the client if there is a rating or a decline. And, and again, LTCI partners can prep you not only with the data in terms of who gets approved, who gets declined, but we could also provide you know, kind of a what to expect uh, worksheet in terms of uh, the underwriting process. So when one person gets approved, one gets declined, just know going in, 
it's you know people get pissed off. It's emotional. They get angry at the insurance companies, and and your job is their advocate. Uh, number one, to potentially try to find some coverage elsewhere if we can, or number two, impress upon them how important it is to hang on to this stuff. So, you know, I'm not going to go through a, a long commercial about who we are and, and what we do. I'll just tell you, we make life easy on you. You know, we understand that you do something else for a living, and so we've built our business around that. Uh, we've built our business to educate you, uh, to hold your hand and guide you through this process. I'm not going to go through our DNA uh, and what makes us unique. Uh, what I will tell you is let's focus on the bottom two in this quadrant, the client experience and business building. Um, we can assure you that it's going to be easy to do business with us in terms of getting quotes, getting on the phone with Michelle and her team, uh, you know, having us coach you or be on a conference call with you and your clients. Uh, we can assure you that we have fun, you know, at, at what we do. We like, we actually like it. Yeah, we're 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 weird. We actually like long-term care, and we're passionate about it. And we have a singular focus on this type of a planning. And and you're gonna feel that over the phone when you talk to us that we that we like what we do and we're passionate about it. And we're gonna try to build personal relationships with you and get to know you a bit and un really try to understand your business. Uh, as, because we're going to be able to better support you that way. And then we're going to help you grow your business. We've got some really cool marketing and sales tools that you're going to be able to use. We conduct conference calls like the one I mentioned that's coming up next Thursday that we'll send you some info on. Um, and, and we're always thinking of something new. You know, Michelle and I and her team get together regularly and say, hey, how can we make life easier on these guys? What, what do we need? What keeps on coming up in terms of questions so that we can – provide them information to go out there and, number one, have the conversation, and number two, get through the conversation and, and get through those walls that clients put up. So, you know, we really look at ourselves as, as a business that helps you build your business and, and grow your business. And, and uh, you know, I don't need to tell anybody on the phone today about what's going on in terms of health care reform and, and margin or commission compression. Long-term care is a great way uh, to add another product line and annuitize your income. Uh, they're just phenomenal renewal compensation as it relates to long-term care, and people hang on to these policies forever. You know, the lapse rate on long-term care is only 1%. Uh, with some companies, you receive renewal compensation for the life of the policy. Most companies, you know, for at least a 10-year period. Um, we came up with this blueprint. Michelle, can you talk about this, this tool that we use a little bit? Sure. This is part of our comparison software that we use. And uh, if you've not had an opportunity to run through our sales team before, I encourage you to at least try it out, maybe try it out on yourself. Um, because what we do is we go ahead and take a look at, at a client's health, first and foremost, as we've mentioned several times on the call. And we'll put together a comparison of several carriers. And then you know we'll make a full recommendation of which one we think is best for the client, whether it be based on their age, their medical, um, information, uh, their target premium that they're trying to achieve. And, and we used to just show the presentation. So immediately a client's eyes are drawn to the bottom line and what is the price, what does this cost. Uh, what we've done recently, and I think we've had this for about a year or two now, and it's actually working very well for us, is what we call the blueprint. And it is a little snapshot here, it's hard to see. But what this does is it allows you to have the conversation with a client about long-term care, maybe go through some of the objections that we've talked about today, and uh, and actually take a look at what is it, um, what is what does it cover, what are some of the statistics. Uh, takes a look at a, at a financial analysis of you know what it looks like today and what it will look like 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now when a client actually uh, would need long-term care because a client in their 40s or 50s or even 60s, it's difficult to put yourself in the position of. What will this look like you know, 20, 30, 40 years down the road when I'm actually having a long-term care event? And that's what the blueprint does. It allows you to have that conversation and go through those details before they get to see the bottom line price. Um, so it's, it's been a very valuable tool. And again, if you, haven't, if you don't have a client right now that you want to discuss long-term care with, I encourage you to at least maybe try this on yourself and see what it looks like. Yeah, and, and I'm glad you brought that up, too, in terms of trying this out on yourself. Um, you know, you got to do this. You got to own long-term care insurance. You'll be a testament to the fact that you believe in this type of planning. 
You could use your own policy as a sales tool, whether it's physically showing it to clients or helping them understand your thought process in buying it. You know, when a client objects, you could say, you know, I thought about that too as I was thinking about purchasing long-term care, and here's why we did it. Um, you know, if you're ever going to screw up something in the sales process, screw it up on yourself first. You know, it's a great way to learn long-term care inside out. And I, I fly for a living. You know, I'm, I'm on the road all the time. And uh, the, the uh, flight attendants, before we take off, say, in the unlikely event of a change in cabin pressure, uh, oxygen masks are going to pop down from the cabin roof. Uh, please put it on yourself before helping others. You know, isn't that the case here? Don't all of you on this phone own life insurance? Uh, I'm, I'm sure you have other types of insurance that you own or, or mutual funds, whatnot. Um, do this for yourself before you, you're out there meeting with clients. So we would encourage you to, to ask for a quote. You know, we'll go through this blueprint presentation. You know, it's that USA Today version where it tells a story with pictures, and we found it to be incredibly effective with clients. So you're able to go online and run it yourself or talk to one of our consultants uh, that will run it for you. We've got other tools that are, that are pretty cool. We've got online blogs that you can find on our website, or uh, we can email you uh, information so that you can subscribe to them. So anytime we add something new, you get an email from us. Uh, one is focused on the small group marketplace and group marketplace. One is focused on more carrier and product stuff. And one is a generic planning for long-term care in America blog that where we, we were out there looking at every article you know, in industry, trades, publications, news, you name it, trying to find relevant information that you can share with your clients. You know, hey, send them this link and say, hey, I saw this and thought of you. Let's have a long-term care conversation. Again, we've got a great website at www.ltcipartners.com where you'll be able to download all kinds of tools and information. And if you want, one of our sales team members can give you a test drive. You know, all you have to do is call, call us and uh, at 800-245-8108 and say, hey, you know what, I, I want to get hooked onto your website. How do I do it? Uh, walk me, take five minutes and walk me through it. Tell me where I need to find what. Uh, but, the, but the easiest thing to do is just pick up the phone and call us. Um, we're going to hold your hand and, and guide you through this process. Uh, I really appreciate everybody's time. Michelle, great job today. I appreciate it. Uh, what we'd like to do now is open it up to some Q&A on the, the chat section. Let me Steve, see if I can move the... Uh, thanks so much. Uh, you transfer that back over. Thank you. Um, sure thing. I'm going to... I want to do that. Um, there we go. All right. Okay, so um, there was one question about copies of the slides. Contact your um, Insurance Network America uh, marketing specialist, and we'll be able to make sure that you get that. Um, when Steve and uh, Michelle done a fabulous job of going over this, the seven tips piece. We also have the uh, that one page uh, tool that he was going over. Uh, coordinate to us, and we'll make sure that we will get it out to to them as, to you guys as much as possible. Uh, I think that, that there really aren't a lot of questions here. Do you see any in your question box, Steve? No, my no question. My question box kind of disappeared. So. But um, for everyone, the number is here is on the screen. Call us to receive that, the seven tips on selling long-term care as we roll out of this. The only question that I have is, Steve, don't, you, know, you did a great job of telling people to do it on themselves. I guess I challenge everybody on the call, if you don't have long-term care um, on yourself, then do the quote on yourself just to see what you, you need is. You've all, you're all independent agents and you've worked extremely hard to build your practice. Why do you want to give all that money away to somebody else if you have a, um, if, if you become incapacitated or have a long either nursing home stay or critical or, or, or medical issue that pr is prolonged as uh, once you retire? I just, you know, for me it's, for me it's $300 a day, 90 day elimination, five year benefit. How about you, Steve? I did a $200 a day, 90-day deductible with a three-year benefit period, and I have an inflation protection where every three years the uh, uh, the insurance company comes back to me and says, hey, Steve, do you want to buy more coverage? So I kind of want to buy-as-you-go option. It kept my price point down to 
I think fifty-two dollars a month. Okay. Yeah. My my I went I went with a simple inflation option as opposed to a compound, just because uh, it just made it somewhat somewhat pricey. Okay, Michelle, your turn. <laughs> Tell us. What's your, what's your coverage? Uh, a little bit, a little bit similar to Steve. Uh, started out with two hundred thousand dollar pool of money concept and uh, buy as you go inflation option. Okay. So uh, for all the participants on the call, they see it can be built. It can be built specifically to the client's need and their financial condition. So, um, Mike, Mike, one thing I wanted to mention too. One last thing before we get off that you know, as independent agents on the phone today, you're independent contractors. If you're buying long-term care on yourself, you're going to be able to deduct a portion of the, the premium. Uh, you know, you don't have to do it for everybody at your business. You're going to be able to deduct. And and if you're doing it for yourself and your spouse, the benefit, the, the price discounts are significant. Yep. So, so I don't have any more uh, questions in the queue. I want to thank both of you again. Great presentation. I also want to thank all the agents for the call. Thank you for... Uh, for your business, thank you for participating. Mike Mallon and the rest of the team are here today to answer your, your questions and calls. And again, 800-456-7999. As you roll out of this, um, of this webinar, give us a call. We're ready to get you the, um, the complimentary sales tool, the seven tips on selling more long-term care insurance. And with that, that concludes today's presentation. Steve and Michelle, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Guys, have a great rest of the week and a good weekend. For all the agents out there, thanks again, and, and have a great week. Take care. Take care, guys. Thank you.